Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Talk About It Tuesday. I'm your host, Malin. And I'm your other host, Jamie. And today's article is one about a trusted official going rogue, I say. That's that's kind of my... <laughs> Maybe going rogue. I don't know. No. Do I've you want me to recap it? Yeah, go ahead and recap it. But I've already made up my mind. I'm just kidding. Well. <laughs> go ahead and recap it. <laughs> Snap judges and biases take center stage on today's episode of Roundtable Mindsets. Talk about it Tuesday. So the the headline uh, comes from the AP Associated Press, updated two days ago. So the headline reads, search continues in Maine as officer is charged with lying about taking missing person to the hospital. Um, in reading through this this article, there's a main police officer. Uh, his name is Chandler Cole. He was interviewed by police on February 23rd of 2022 um, regarding a missing person. Um, I don't know if they name the missing person. I think I just saw the last name was Foot. Um, he went missing. Eric in Eric Jan- Foot. Oh, thank you, Eric Foot went missing in January. Correct. Yeah. So the officers charged in uh, with several co- crimes that include falsifying a report where he claimed that he was taking the missing person to the hospital. Um, he was also charged with aggra- aggravated forgery, tampering with public records or information and falsifying physical ev- evidence and unsworn falsification. According to court records, he was just arrested on March 29th and he will not make comment. He has said no comment uh, when he was reached by the Associated Press. So these charges were first reported on WAGM TV and they stem from a case of a missing person who appeared to be distressed when he was seen walking along the road on January 30th. Uh, the officer then reported that he had picked Eric Foot and dropped him off, picked him up and dropped him off at a convenience store, but he told the man's parents that he took him to the hospital. Once the investigation came through, it concluded that Cole altered his report to reflect a drop off at the hospital, but there was no record at the hospital of his drop off. Eric Foot has still not been located and it has the article states that it's just really rocked the community of about 1,500 people, and they've organized search parties and, and are really trying to find this young young man. The county sheriff's office is now handling the investigation, and the town of 1,500 people apparently is in the process of deciding whether they want to keep their police department. The chief retired in January, 30, uh, January 31st, and with this gentleman resigning... There's really no other police officers there. So the sheriff's office is providing coverage while the town is without police coverage. So, so this is, I I mean, (laughs) there's a missing person. There's a lying police officer, according to reports. And I guess my question is, is why? Well, so now we have... In the last couple of years, I don't know about you, but I've seen a lot of news articles about people, young people, college age people um, walking down the street and then never being seen again. I think there's a, a, a there's a case right now. Is it in Missouri, Kansas City, Missouri, I think, where the person was seen leaving a bar and they they saw him stumbling across and they can follow him throughout the city for a little bit. And then he just disappears. I would almost chalk this story up, even though that's tragic and that's not something to just gloss over, but I would try, I would uh, chalk this article up to something similar. If it wasn't for the fact that the police officer lied and unnecessarily, if this police officer didn't have anything to do with the case or the missing person, why would you willingly tell the, the parent something that can be easily credited or discredited? I don't understand why you would even tell that that story. What would be the benefit if you didn't unless you had an, an, a hand in that gentleman going missing? I don't understand why lying. And I know that's me jumping to a conclusion and that's me kind of putting the jury and, you know, already condemning this police officer. 
But I can't think of a logical reason why you would do that. Well, I also, I mean, I have to believe that people who get into law enforcement get into law enforcement to be helpers and to, you know, to do the job and to do the job well and to, you know, serve and protect and all of the things that police officers do. So it makes me wonder, like to me, I start wondering, first of all, how old is this person? Is Eric, it doesn't say that he's a minor. So I guess I'm assuming he's, he's a grown adult. He wasn't being arrested. Otherwise he would be in jail. So he must not have been doing something wrong. And, you know, I just, if I put myself in that spot, it makes me wonder, I mean, I can drop somebody off at the hospital. That doesn't mean that they're going to go in and admit themselves. You know what I mean? But it, it makes me wonder what was he maybe he maybe he changed his story because like he didn't feel like it was his place to put information out there about the guy or you know what I mean? Maybe he talked to the guy and the guy was like, no, I don't want to be found or you know what I'm saying? Like there's just enough question there for me that I don't I don't assume that this guy is part of it. Of course, it's suspicious and it would be helpful if he could be honest and just tell people what exactly what happened. Not that anybody would believe him at this point because he's been blasted on the AP as being a liar. But, you well, know, it just, I don't know. And he, ha- he is a liar. And I have the utmost respect for police officers and what they do. What I don't understand, even in your explanation, which I can kind of follow to an extent, I don't know why you lie. I, I don't get that. I don't understand... If you dropped him off at a convenience store, why not just say you dropped him off at a convenience store? Something in that lie makes me think for whatever reason, and I'm, I am reading into this. I'm the first to admit he had to, for, to give himself distance, to give himself in case he was later discovered that, that, that Eric was in his patrol car for whatever reason. I just don't understand why you, as a police officer, you just don't tell the truth. If you don't, you're actually hindering the investigation. So this police officer who's sworn to protect and serve is actually doing the exact opposite by doing this. Even if he has clean hands, the sheer fact that he lied and said something to that was contradictory to the truth is actually impeding the investigation. So it's going against what they're what he's sworn to do. I have to believe that you're not doing this just because you're a cold hearted person. So I have to read into that there's a little bit of involvement there. I just, I just don't know what the involvement is. Am I, am I ready to say that he kidnapped Eric, that he did something to Eric? No. Could that be a possibility? What happens if he accidentally hit Eric? I, and I'm, I'm, I'm really reaching here, but I'm saying there has to be a level of involvement because why would you do that? Why would you like <laughs> lie to the parents of what you did with their child? And I did look it up. I know we don't go outside of the article very often, but I was curious. He was 39 years old when he went missing. Well, see, and so to me, that's and that's where there's enough question for me to say, did he file a report and and rethink back to what his conversation with this guy was? And as a grown adult, I have the right to disappear if I want to. It's not illegal for me to disappear and not be in any contact with my family. Is it nice? No, <laughs> like it's kind of crappy and I wouldn't do that. But at the same time, you know, it makes me wonder if Eric doesn't want to be found. And if that's the case, you know, maybe he really struggled with what to do in that space. I don't know if I don't know what the rules are because I'm not a police officer. I don't know if you are required to file a report for every interaction you have with a human being or, you know, something like that. But I have to, I mean, I have to believe that the people that are in uniform protecting citizens are doing it for the right reasons and and are exceptional human beings. And I I can't imagine I don't know. I guess I hope. I really hope that I can have enough of an open mind to say there's not there's not enough in this article for me to believe that the man is guilty of anything other than maybe some really dumb choices when it comes to paperwork. And, you know, I I hope I hope Eric is out there safe on his own accord and doing doing as he chooses to do. And lots of Lots of sympathy for the family, but my goodness, I just, I can't, there's not enough here for me to lambast the guy and 
even calling him a liar in the thing is kind of, I don't know, it just kind of bothers me because he hasn't been convicted of anything or, you know what I mean? Like, it feels pretty opinionated, in my opinion. Well, he was, um, he resigned after being charged with aggravated forgery, tampering with public records of information and falsifying physical evidence and unsworn falsifications. That was according to court records. Well, of course. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what the rules are around that either. But yeah, I I don't know that somebody with pending charges can really wear a badge and arrest other people. I'm I'm sure that's part of the rules, right? That you would have to be at least on administrative leave. Well, administration leave, yes, but he resigned. Well, there's no chief. (laughs) It was just him. Police officers at all. (laughs) Right, exactly. So who's there to put him on administrative leave? I, I don't even know. That's kind of a crazy situation, too. Yeah, I think I think there is enough. I I will I will kindly disagree with you. I think there is enough here to say this police officer did something wrong and he is for reasons that I don't I don't understand. It would be nice to have something in this article from the police officer to explain away why that he he lied. But reading just this article, I would say there is enough for me to say he did something wrong. And I I want to know why. It, nowhere does it say that he said that it was a, a, an accident. Even the people that did the investigation is not saying that this was misfiling of paperwork, that there is enough here that they believe that he did some wrongdoing, even if that wrongdoing is falsifying records or evidence. And, and that's enough for me to start asking the questions, at least, to understand why did that take place. I hope Eric's doing well, too. But my question isn't around, this article isn't around, is a grown man choosing to stay away from his family? My question is, why is there a police officer lying and falsifying records of a person who went missing? Yeah, to be fair, I think it also, I can also look at it at the same time and say, okay, if that was the case, let's say, let's say he picked Eric up and Eric was like, dude, no, I'm not going back there. I am trying to disappear. Um... Why wouldn't he just say that, I guess? You know, why wouldn't he just say that? So I, I can I can see it from that perspective, too. Um, you know me. I just have to I have to give the benefit of the doubt as much as I can. because. Oh, and I am, too. You know. I'm not here saying that he did something to Eric yet. And I say the word yet because I can't get there with this article. But I there's enough in here that I'm like, if he's not under a microscope, he should be. Because that's weird. That's weird to to have that kind of slipping of the mind or putting the wrong thing on on a document especially in a town of 1500 so you know coming from a small town myself that was almost three times that size there's a lot of time there's not big happenings going on in the police station so i can only imagine with the 1500 community this would be a like a once in a I don't know how many people go missing in that community, but let's say once a month kind of ordeal. So you would think that your paperwork would be tip top. <laughs> there would be all the accounts would be there. Well, here's what I was thinking though. And and where I was coming from is I kind of feel like this poor guy is, is the only police officer. He has no leadership. He has no supervision. He has no one to be able to run by, you know, I I imagine policing would bring up cases where there might be some moral dilemma, some difficult decisions that might need to be made. And and he had no one to go through that with. Like he had no one to bounce those things off of and say, hey, this is what I experienced. I'm not sure what to do with it and to get guidance in that. And so, I mean, not that it's okay, not that this is like excusable, but at the same time to be like, huh, like what if, what if he what if he wasn't sure what to do because the guy told him, hey, I don't want to go back? Or you know what I'm saying? What if there was something else that happened and he wasn't sure how to handle it because he had no leadership and he had no, or even peers to say, hey, I experienced this thing and I'm not sure what the rules are here. I'm not sure what protocol says. Or, you know, he asked me not to file a report. What do I do? You know? So I I think, I think there's enough there to me if they can't have a if they can't have some sort of leadership structure, they probably shouldn't have a police force and maybe let the sheriff's department cover it because that's I mean, I lived in a tiny town and that's how they did it. The the sheriff's department covered the county sheriff covered the, the town. But 
I feel like that's a that's a necessary thing when you've got difficult situations that come up on a regular basis. So, yeah, the last thing I'll say on this, and that because I just sound like a broken record, is I go and I try to make. I try to put myself in that spot. And even if I've, and I've had weak leadership in my roles before, but in, and that might help explain the lack of direction, but the work that I do, I still do with integrity. And there's never been a time with weak leadership or strong leadership. Have I ever just falsified or lied on the documents because I didn't have a strong (laughs) leader base. So that's just what I keep going back to again. I'm not saying the man did anything, but it is really suspicious and I would want to dig in. And I I don't, I'm not surprised that he is being looked at and there's probably some side eyes going on because I'm giving him a huge side eye just because once you cross that line and you find out that you're lying and you're falsifying records, the rest of what you've done is now called into question. And I think no matter if you're a police officer or not, if you are somehow connected to a case or you make yourself connected to the case through lying, you are automatically a suspect until proven otherwise. And that proof gets harder and harder, especially if we can't trust what you have to say, because we've already proven that you're, you've are you lied once. That means you're going to lie again. So that's where I said. Well, to be fair, before we before we sign off and and I uh, let it let sleeping dogs lie, I do think it is important to remember that the the article did repeatedly talk about alleged um, crimes or alleged things. So he he's just been charged with these with these uh, crimes. He's not been convicted. So um, he is innocent until proven guilty, and that's the beauty of our justice system. So yet he hasn't been convicted yet. Mm-hmm. But yes. it's coming for you. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone get your vigil- vigilante out. Let's go. Woo-woo. I'm just kidding. Because Malin has so much to say about laws and some podunk town in Maine. <laughs> well, I think a law that should apply across the board. Anyways, I've said my piece. You've said your piece. We both agree that I'm... I have. We both agree that I'm right. So, Okay. <sighs> I didn't hear that at all, that's, but good that's luck. That's funny because that's what <laughs> translated in my earpiece. No, I'm kidding. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for listening to another episode of Talk About It Tuesday. We will be back next week with a whole new article and a whole set, new set of opinions. And don't forget to join us on Thursday for a regular episode of Roundtable Mindset. We will bring a whole new set of, I don't know, ideas and perspectives. And, you know, we'll just do the thing that we always do on Thursdays, and that's just grow and learn, right? Have some fun. Yes. Yes. (laughs) All right. Well, thanks for bringing the article, Malin. Yeah. Thanks for recapping it. Uh, We will see you again next week. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.